hello friends welcome you all to another video and today we are going to start unit number two and the first chapter of unit number two is literature as imitation and the subtitle is the plato and aristotle debate so it is a plato aristotle debate because it was a plato who initiated or who introduce the concept of literature as imitation in his book republican ten and aristotle has given a new meaning to the word imitation actually plato and aristotle has used the greek word that is mimesis mimesis that is the imitation imitation that is the you just uh, obey or you just uh, follow others like that okay so that is the imitation so without wasting any further time let's get started so first we are going to start with the introduction so there are two different meanings two different application frequent application of the word imitation you can say that there are two diverse and frequent applications of the word imitation so first is to define the nature of literature and other arts and the second one is to indicate the relationship of one literary work to another literary work we served as its model so first uh, definition or the first application is that what is to define the nature of literature and other arts nature sorup okay so how the nature of literature how literature is to understand that okay we apply the uh, word imitation to the literary work and the second meaning is that we wanted to indicate we wanted to find out we wanted to sort out the relationship between one literary work to another literary work we serve as this model for example if i wanted to write a love poem so what i will do i will uh, search uh, to the greatest uh, poet who has written love poet poems so i will read uh, his poems his love poems and then i will uh, write down uh, the my love poem okay because i think that uh, those love poems which is written by the great poet is the is my models okay so i will follow those models and i will write my love poem okay so in this way if i want to write a novel or if i want to write a uh, drama so i will what i will do i will uh, seek the greatest or popular novelist or dramatist and i will uh, take him as a model as an example that how i should write a novel or poetry or drama and i will write like that so i think you got it so that is the relationship then after the my my text when i wrote my text after the completion of my text okay so how much i imitated how much i followed the other text so to understand to indicate that relationship we use word imitation okay you got it okay so let let let's start with the aristotle so according to aristotle as he defines poetry as an imitation so imitation is something like representation representation okay but it was not aristotle who introduced the term it was actually plato who has coined this term so let's start with the plato first so plato uh, actually he born in uh, uh, 600 bc okay so i have not given the exact uh, dates of him exact uh, when he was uh, born and died okay so there is no need to write down that if any need so definitely if you you please uh, write in comment section or whatsapp me if you really need uh, when he was uh, b- born and when he was died definitely i will add in in your notes and i will upload that if you really ne- need it otherwise if otherwise i will upload as it is note if you comment that if you need uh, their birth and what then i i will definitely upload or you can uh, uh, search on google you will get that okay but that is not important here when he was born and when he was that okay i have just told you that he was born in 5th or 6th century bc and then he wrote this book so he has written a book republic 10 in which he mentioned imitation as reflection or po- coffee okay so he has written a republic book actually this book is about the democracy hmm and uh, he wanted to he wanted to talk about that how idle republic should be 
okay so what were the uh, the ideality or wha- how it should be okay so because of that and uh, he f- he also came to know that about uh, because he was a idealist and he wanted to make that book so in the republic book number 10 so before that i start the republic 10 i would like to tell you the exact dates so please uh, write down it in your notebook i will also add uh, those things in my notes also if you mention in the comment section otherwise i will not add the add that so actually pluto was uh, born in uh, 424 or 28 or 427 we don't know about that so when he was born we don't know about that maybe he was born in 424 or 423 or 428 or 427 so when he was died again we are not uh, don't know that whether he was da- died in 348 or 347 bc okay so he was an athenian philosopher during the classical period in ancient greece and he was a founder of platonic school of thought and the academy okay the first institution of higher learning in the western world and where aristotle also learned from him and then he became his pupil so let's start with the, his theory let's talk about the book number 10 uh, republic 10 and what he has talked about in that book so you can also read below and uh, you know that as i have i have already mentioned that he was an idealist and therefore he believed that only ideas are true and real okay so what actually he wanted to say okay so first we are going to see it and then in other words we can use uh, you can see it what actually he wanted to say so according to him that ideas are alone are true and real and earthly things like beauty goodness justice etc are mere types or copies of idol beauty goodness etc which exist in heaven in other words according to plato when god made the heaven okay when he wanted to make a heaven to so idea came in his mind okay there were there were nothing according to plato according to you know that the greek philosophy about the universe and according to all the religious uh, books it is written that there were nothing okay only god was there and he was thinking that how i should make a universe so first idea came into his mind so those ideas which came in his mind these ideas are real so what uh, happened next then he copied those ideas from his uh, mind and and he uh, pasted elsewhere and then heaven emerged then heaven he, he created heaven uh, because of the those ideas the original ideas came into his mind so when he decided to make a earth then he copied all the things which were existed in heaven and then he pasted on earth and in this way earth became okay so earth became so according to plato when okay when a painter wanted to portray a picture of sun rising so what will happen he just look at the that sun rising okay which actually a poet uh, painter doesn't know that how to create that scene okay so already that scene is there because god has already made it according to plato so he just watch it and he just uh, portray that scene uh, with the on the paper with the help of colors and pencil so if a poet wanted to make a poem or he just wanted to make a image of words that is the sun rising so what he will do he will look at it and he just picture uh, portray it with the words so here you uh, keep in your mind that plato has compared poetry with painting actually painting is different art and poetry is a different art but uh, he just mixture it he just mingled all these things and he just compared it so for him imitation is just reflection or representation of these idol forms and not the expression so it is not a true expression it is just idol form that one person or painter okay painter makes the bed but he don't know how to make a bed he can paint a bed but he don't know how to make a bed it is a carpenter who makes the beds so in this way he doesn't know how to make the sun rising or uh, or the things which are existed he just imitated it he just represented it uh, he just represents it uh, with the help of color and paper so likewise the poet also just with the uh, help of uh, pen words he just make a image of words on the page 
okay so they are not an expression according to plato so expression is creative therefore poetry is not creative because if a poet is not uh, expressing he just just representing he just reflecting okay and if he is not uh, representing then it means that he is just expressing so expression is actually creative and reflection or representation is not creative so because of that plato held poetry that poetry is not creative so he opened the can paint a bed but he does not know how to make one the poet imitates reality without necessarily understanding it so therefore plato has famously declared that poetry is not one stories but thrice removed from reality poetry is the mother of uh, all liars because of because of the lie we should condemn poetry and we should follow philosophy that is the plato wanted to say actually this is called as a platonic dilemma because everybody who hates literature who hates poetry they gives example of plato that plato also has said that the poetry is a mother of all liars okay all lies because kuch khara hai nahi usme okay sab kuch jhoota hai according to plato bas aristotle who was his pupil he doesn't like his idea and therefore he wanted to give answer to plato and therefore he wrote a book and the name of that book is poetics he wanted to give answer to the charges on poetry made by his guru plato and therefore he you know that he did not invented this uh, term it was the plato who used this word he has used the word mimesis that is imitation that is representation but aristotle has breathed a new meaning into it and uh, that is the new meaning is very important because he did not consider imitation as a mere mimicry but according to aristotle imitation is something different than reflection or representation according to aristotle imitation is a something creative process creative process of the the universal truth or a divine truth or a such a certain kind of truth so for him imitation is the basis of all the fine arts without imitation nobody can create arts nobody can contribute in any arts so therefore it is a very important that according to him imitation is a basis of all the fine arts because imitation is not a mere reflection it is not a mere representation but it is a creative thing according to aristotle and here you should uh, look at here the another word that aristotle equated poetry with music he didn't do uh, he didn't do the mist mistake like a uh, plato because plato was in error he was wrong to compare a poetry with a poetry but actually aristotle has compared poetry with music because the music and poetry has a natural relationship because without the music uh, poetry cannot be a melody and without uh, poetry without words uh, music will not be melody okay sometimes when you listen only music so sometimes you get bored but with the uh, singer is singing a song and their music is there then we enjoy that music and that poetry the that song so that is very important so according to aristotle the poet imitates not the surprise of things but the representation of passions and emotions of man okay what the poet is doing okay poet is actually creating because imitation is a creative thing so poet imitates okay creatively the things which represent the passions and emotions of men because we put our passions we put our emotions we put our uh, our feelings in our literary work of art so therefore according to plato po poet represents po uh, poet represents passions and emotions of men so he introduced three aspects of imitation one is the medium of imitation second one is the manner of imitation and the third one is a objective or object of imitation so according to aristotle poetry differs from painting or music by medium of, of imitation poetry itself distinguishes between two by manners of imitation as narrative poetry and dramatic poetry okay you just uh, read it carefully okay poetry differs from painting or music or other fine arts by medium of imitation how for example you know that a painter needs color he needs pencil he needs a white paper a musician needs uh, musical instruments so without musical instrument he cannot produce music and for poet poet need only a page white page any kind of page 
and any and according to that page he need the pen only okay so if the white paper is there he can use the blue ink pen or black ink pen or red ink pen or any kind of ink or pen which is suitable on the white paper okay so in this way the medium is different okay for painter painter needs colors painter need brush painter need uh, pencil okay musician needs uh, a musical instruments and poet just need a pen and paper only so therefore they are differentiated between each other because of their medium of imitation and again aristotle uh, doesn't talk here he again said that poetry itself distinguishes between by manner of imitation as narrative poetry and dramatic poetry the manner if you wanted to just to illustrate or you just want to narrate only okay for example there was a king he has a two queens he has a four children and there was one monster okay like that now i am just narrating so this is the manner of my narration it is a man manner of imitation so therefore it is called as a narrative poetry like epic or anything okay and what is the dramatic poetry what i have narrated actually you are watching it on theater or on television screen or in the theater it is actually performed what i am saying that there is a king the king is there originally he has to queen is there his children is there monster is there you are watching it so that is the dramatic poetry so the manner of imitation is different because it is the action is going on and in narration just narration or description is going on so therefore poetry itself were divided between two parts one is the narrative poetry and the second one is the dramatic poetry and again dramatic poetry okay again dramatic poetry can be divided between two parts and again before that uh, we can say that according to aristotle dramatic poetry is the best than narrative poetry so dramatic poetry also can divided between two parts one is a comedy and the second one is a tragedy by object of imitation what is the object why you have written dramatic poetry what is the reason for writing that dramatic poetry that is the object what is your object so comedy represent men worse than they really are, really are. you can you can watch uh, comedy movies in the comedy movies all the actors they, they behave foolishly okay very foolishly if you watch the movie like akshay kumar's movie uh, that is a chandni chok to china and in that movie villain actually p on p uh, do you understand the word p p means susu karne on the mouth of akshay kumar in that movie okay so we can say that how worse he was shown in that movie to just make a comedy so the comedy represent men worse than they really are and whereas tragedy represent men higher great than they really or actually are so therefore according to aristotle tragedy is the greatest literary genre it is a, one of the greatest genre of literary work of art so in the recent time okay the second uh, in that the second meaning was there in the recent time imitation is used to draw association of a literary work of art with another literary work because everybody is copying to another person everybody is following the original text or the great text or a model they just make a model text and they just try to imitate it they just try to imitate it and just uh, write down like that okay so that is the another word way to understand the imitation so in short imitation was first used by plato to blame the poetry to accuse the poetry to he he was appealing to that people that uh, people should not study poetry people should forget poetry people should throw poetry and they should only study philosophy because philosophy is greater than poetry according to plato because uh, philosophy teaches us uh, moral things but whereas poetry was the mother of liars according to plato but it was it was called as a platonic dilemma but aristotle who not only breathed the new meaning to it but also traced that imitation is a creative process and he has given answer to platonic dilemma of his guru that is a plato so thank you very much my friends uh, if I, i think that you have understood all the things if you didn't get anything please write down in the attendance form if you didn't get it and uh, raise your questions i am there to solve your questions so thank you very much for watching